In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own character builder in Cartoon Animator 5 from an existing series of cartoon characters. Let's get on with it. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use characters created by Sopan Design uh, because I have quite a lot of these characters, as you can see here. And they're designed for explainer video. So they're a very good choice for characters that you want to be able to mix and match and create a whole different range of peoples for people for all sorts of purposes. You could, of course, use any series of characters, but if you're interested in these ones in particular, this is Saipan's story. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce her actual name. Uh, we'll just call her Sopan Design. As you can see, she does a lot of characters that are the same and very good for mixing and matching features to get different designs or different versions of people uh, within a character creator. So you've even got a Christmas pack here, uh, fonts and numbers. Uh, all of her work is geared towards explainer videos for business and education and those types of things. So to get started, we're going to go back to Cartoon Animator 5. And I'm not going to do every single character in her range for this particular demonstration. What I'm going to do is get her business people pack here. This is her first pack and then she's got a volume two, but I'm going to use the first pack. And you'll notice that she does front and side views of each character. So I think each one also has a G3 360 head, so uh, really all you need is just the facial features. I'm just going to use the front views for now. I'm not going to do all the side views, and I'll put each one of these characters on the stage. We'll fast forward through this till I'm done. So that's the eight characters that come in the pack. Here's of course 16 characters because she includes the side view of each one, but as I said, we're just gonna go with the front views for now. And I'll just check, we'll bring up one of the side view characters. Don't think the features are particularly different. I'm gonna zoom in on these and we'll have a look at the heads on the characters when you turn them. I'm going to select this one. Just grab the face key editor up. If it does anything particularly different between the heads, just where they're facing. No, that looks pretty much the same when it's turned. So you can pretty much get everything off of the front view for these characters. So it looks like she's probably using the same head for both the front and the side view. So that's okay if you had a character series where the side view was particularly very different from the front view, you might want to do both, but uh, it's looking like Sopan Design doesn't, so get rid of this side view character for now. And you don't have to bring out all the characters onto the stage like I have, uh, I'm just doing that for the purposes of this demonstration. The next thing you want to do is take each of these characters one at a time into the composer. I'm going to start with this guy and we'll take him into the composer and we're going to turn the bones off because we're not doing anything with those. Go to the content manager and we're going to go to our custom tab. And on the custom tab you'll see we've got these icons for the different sections up here. Uh, we don't need to worry about the actor one because obviously we've already got complete actor saved as a pack in the template side. We just want to open up the head folder. And you'll see we've got all these subfolders here. What we're going to do is save to each subfolder. And we're going to do that for the head. Uh, we may do it for the body, but I think the only thing you can save for the body is the hands. And we may want to do that uh, if we're trying to change outfits and we want to put different color hands on the character. Because these particular characters are PSD characters, they're not vector characters, so they don't have all the color management system. So that's why we might want to save the hands. Uh, I've got some accessories. I don't think Sopan's characters have too many accessories, so we may not do that. And of course we've got props, which we're not going to be doing. So it's mainly the head and face features, and possibly the hands as well. So we're going to go into the head folder, and we're going to click the first one here do head and we're going to create a folder to put all of these things in so that they're all together and much easier to find 
find when we're making up our characters. First things first, the easiest way to make a folder within a folder is to right click on the folder that you want to put a subfolder in and do create subfolder. And this is going to be, all we're going to do is put the name of the designer in, which is say and go OK. And I'm going to turn off this check mark here, show subfolder items. I can see my folder right here that it's there. I'm going to open that folder and with the head selected up here and making sure we're in the save hand folder, we're just going to go save and we're going to name this head. Uh, I might just call it, uh, we'll just call it hey pan head 01. Go OK. And in theory, that will have saved the entire head of this character. Now, if you want to mess around and make sure the thumbnail is reflective of what's actually in the folder, you can. So you could do something like move in on the face, so the face is in the middle, and go capture thumbnail. Then we want to go to the next folder, and this is for the face. And what that means is it's going to save the actual face sprite, not all of the actual face features, just the sprite itself. So again, the face folder, we're going to create a subfolder, and again, we're going to call it Sapan. Make sure in that folder, and just go save. And face one, zero one. And I'm not going to worry about doing thumbnails for every little thing. I'm just going to uh, know that it's in the face folder, and it's the face for that character. I'm just going to go with this particular thumbnail that it's generated. I'm going to go to eyebrows. I'm going to do the same thing. Create subfolder. Open. Okay. Open that folder and go save. Again, save and brow zero one. Now I'm going to go to the eyes. Create the subfolder. Open. Okay. Hit save and eye zero one. Okay. And you'll see the next one is Morphire. That has, that's not to do with this style of character. That's to do with the Morph Head characters. So we don't need to worry about that one. Go to the Nose and create the subfolder. Call it Apan. Go into there. Scroll this down a bit. Save. Save and Nose 01. Okay. Next we're going to go to the Mouth. And again, create a subfolder. Make sure we're in the subfolder and go save. And mouth zero one. And then again, we've got morph teeth. Again, that's to do with the morph-based heads. This isn't a morph-based head. This is a sprite-based head, so we can ignore that one. Go straight to the ears. Again, we're going to do. Create subfolder, A pen, OK. Make sure we're in the subfolder and go save. Say pen ear, 01, OK. And then we're going to go into the hair folder. Again, create a subfolder, call it say pen. Make sure we're in that folder and click save. That's all of the face done. Uh, we'll go into the body and click on hands. Again, right click, create subfolder, say pan. Make sure we're in that folder. Go save. Say pan hands, zero one. And I don't think this character has any accessories. If we look at the layer here, it's just nothing really extra in here. Look in the head, no real accessories at all, so we won't worry about trying to save any accessories. And of course, there aren't any props. So once we've done all that, we're going to go out of the composer and we're going to do that entire thing again for the next guy. And I'm going to go through and do all of that for all of these characters and we'll sort of come back when I've done or if uh, there's something different that I want to draw your attention to. So I'm just going to get that done and then we'll come back.
So here you can see on this character, he actually has a mustache and a beard, and that would be counted as a head accessory. So to save that, uh, you need to actually select it. Or you can also select it in the layer manager. You can see it's an extra item in here. Select it there too. Come back to the content manager, and you go into accessories in the head file. And then again, we want to do create subfolder. And double click into that and just go save. And I'm going to call that JPAN face there. I'm calling it 02 because this is my second character, so it goes with that character. Go OK, and that's saved the facial hair. And we can test that just by getting out of here and bringing in our first character into the composer. Close to the camera here, turn the bones off, go to the content manager, go to our accessories, head folder, say pan folder. Now if I double click on the face hair that I just saved, uh, you'll see that's added to the character. You can sort of test that out in the 360 head like so. That's how you save an accessory that's part of the face. So I'm just going to keep going and getting this stuff done. So something that I've noticed through the course of saving out all the various parts of these characters is any character that has an accessory listed in the scene menu, such as say this character here, you can see businessman front three, his beard is li listed as a separate accessory. Then when we come down to these ones, we've got businesswoman front two, her glasses and her front hair are listed as an accessory. And then these two women here, both their back hair are listed as an accessory. Uh, in those cases, you have to actually save out the back hair and for this character, the front hair as a separate item because it won't actually save with the hair. So that's just a case of taking the character into the composer. And you can see here, back hair is down here separate from everything else so we need to select that and go into our content for the accessories I should say and for the head and then I'll go into my say pan folder and we'll save the selected back hair it has to be selected and I'll just hit the save button say pan back hair and in my numbering system this is for woman seven so I'm going to put zero seven go OK Save the back hair on her. So in theory, if I now delete that back hair, and then go back to content and double click on my save back hair, uh, it's come back in, but it's come back in at full size. We may just have to do edit pose, bring it back in, and size it. Her actual hip, and that should be okay. Anyway, now that I've saved everything out, I can now easily create variations of the various characters. For example, if we wanted to change this character, I'm going to do a duplicate of him, and we wanted to make some changes to him. Now just take him into the composer and we can do things like go into our head files, go straight to heads that we saved. I can literally just swap any of these heads onto him. So have this guy's head 
so that this guy could have a blue tie instead of a red tie and drag and bring that out say yes to that and now we've got this character with a blue tie instead of a red tie or if we undo that and say we wanted to change his face shape there's not a lot of variation between these. Say we want to change his face shape to this guy's face shape, even though the skin colour doesn't match. So we go into the face section here, instead of the head face, and it should just change the actual face sprite. Go in here on this guy, and you'll see there the actual face sprite has been replaced, and all the other facial features have been left the same. But I won't leave that as that, because obviously that's not a very good look for this character at all do that. That was just to demonstrate uh, what the face category actually does. Uh, we could do things like go down into the accessory category, so that's this one here, and do anything that we've got on the faces here. So we could give him a beard from this character here. Double click. Now he's got a beard. And we could also add some glasses in. We could give him maybe this woman's glasses. Try that. Double click. If we want to adjust where they go, we'll do edit pose. Now we can click and move them so they're over the eye and they should stay there. And if we wanted to, we could give him a completely different hairstyle as well. So it can go my Sam, Sam Pam hair folder, choose one of these hairstyles. Maybe give him this sort of curly hair from this guy. And there we go sure if this character had a 360 head or not. There he does, we can see that's working fine. As you can see that's how we can now easily make variations on the characters. Let's say we wanted this character, so I'm going to do a duplicate of her. Bring her over here, take her into the composer. a little bit because that's what we'd be working on and let's say we didn't want her to have the glasses just delete those let's say for example we wanted to make it look like she's got less makeup and stuff on we could go into maybe do one of the mouths and one of the guys who don't have lipstick on so we could use this guy's mouth Double click on here, and you'll notice that mouth is a little bit higher on the face than what we want, so we need to go into Edit Pose, select the mouth, and just bring it down where you would expect it to be. And then you can see she's got earrings on these ears, so perhaps if we go into the ears and select a character's ears that doesn't have earrings, so we could do this guy maybe. See the ears are a bit high on there. On the layer, just turn off her front hair so we see where the ears are. Move her ears down. The actual coordinates up here to get them in the right spot. 175.3. Then turn her front hair back on. As you can see, like the more characters you put into your character builder folders, uh, the more you'll be able to do variations of the different characters. So uh, again, we could get this guy here, and I'll just quickly do a duplicate, and I'll just move this duplicate over here, back that into the composer, and we could just change his hairstyle, give him straight hair or something. So we could go to the hair folder and select this guy's hair. So click on that, get rid of the bones, and we could even select this guy's mouth if we didn't want this sort of really pinky looking mouth, we could go in, go to the mouths folder, give him a different mouth, and there we go, we could again just check what his head looks like, whether it's set up for 360 or not, that one is. That's not too bad, all working fine. So 
there you go, that's how you can create your own character builder in Cartoon Animator and get a bit more use out of characters that all come from the same designer. So I hope you found that tutorial useful. You could of course create a character builder from any series of characters from the same designer and this is just another way you can get more flexibility and use out of the content that you buy from the Real Illusion Marketplace. So as I said I hope you found that useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.